this news uh, was essentially published during, you know, some time after the game via the Manchester Evening News. You can read into that what you want because they, you know, they're a little bit of a dubious source. But this is coming from Samuel Luckhurst, who has a lot of connections at United and is pretty decent in terms of, you know, getting some early news and, you know, um, some early vibes as to what's kind of going on behind the scenes. And the headline says, Manchester United approached Major Pochettino about becoming manager. And it says the following here, it said Manchester United have approached Mr. Pochettino with a view of him replacing Oleg Solskjaer as an ex-club manager. The MEN understands United have made contact with Pochettino's representative amid the team's dismal form under Solskjaer. MEN reported last December Pochettino wants to take over as United manager and his stance on the role is not believed to have changed. And it makes sense when you consider that he was on uh, Monday Night Football the other day on Sky Sports, which is always a telltale sign that something's in the water. Now that could have been booked a time ago, which I don't think it was. But if he has, if he has, his, if the if his representative are as smart as I think they are, and he is astute as I think he is, then I'm sure that that kind of appearance on TV was just a kind reminder to everybody out there, especially clubs wise. Like, hey, I'm about. Um, you know, here's my perspective on football, and of course, whenever. It's it's always a, it's a shame for managers under pressure because especially Sky Sports they have such a woeful panel of analysts and pundits and presenters on their show that whenever whenever anyone comes on especially a former coach doesn't matter if they've got you know if they're pretty terrible and mediocre football coach the fact that they're, they're just a football coach the fact that they're a football coach alone and they've committed their lives to essentially coaching players and analyzing games and formations and all that sort of good stuff. There's such a high level above your regular TV pundit that when they come on and just say anything, it always sounds way more insightful. So they always look super impressive talking, right? I think of Mourinho when he was on Sky Sports and Monday Night Football, giving analysis, I think of Wenger. Um, there's been a few managers, of course, geniuses and, you know, again, legends in their own right. But whenever just a coach goes on there, there's always a clear difference in terms of how they speak. Um, even you see the stuff with Patrice Vieira and Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank, the debates they were having, like you could see those are two ex-pros, but also two people who have kind of gone through the process of getting their badges. So there's a lot more nuance to their conversations, even though they were talking in their second language. So that was great. So with Pochettino coming on Sky Sports, if you're only going to social, you should have been nervous from that moment on. Like for sure, that was a sign that things weren't going to turn around for you. And unfortunately for Solskjaer, in my opinion, he doesn't seem like he's the manager that can get the best out of the players that he has to, for a long period of time, for a stretch of time, maintain some form, know what his best team is, what's his best formation, blah, 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 blah. But there's also my feeling on it is that there's been so much conversation about signings, too much in my opinion especially when you consider how lackluster our signings were under the previous managers and it never quite worked out. There should just be maybe a commitment to having a shop in a certain amount of a budget, right? Just you know, committing to only spending a certain amount each summer, where it's 200 mil, 500 mil to cover five positions. I don't care, but just shopping under a certain budget and then trying to build our way up that way instead of going out and trying to sign all the best galactico -y kind of players and kind of work from there because... What we know for sure, the main concern is that the Glazers will always be the well for the for the foreseeable future. The Glazers will be the owners of United. Edward will be the de facto sporting director. So there's always going to be mismanagement at that level. So the only thing we can sort of pray for in terms of allowing our club to flourish in the future is to have a manager that can work within those constraints. Right? That is what I would think. And continues here it says insiders say the United hierarchy were privately backing Solskjaer prior to Wednesday's night shambolic Champions League defeat by Istanbul. But uh, what how do you say that Istanbul Basak Bas Basak 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 Shir Istanbul Basak Shir, and are reluctant to part company with the Norwegian so early in season. But if United lose at Everton on Saturday, they could end the weekend seventeenth in the Premier League title or in the Premier League table seventeenth. Now in should, play, should managers be given time? Yeah, of course. In an ideal situation, managers should get all the time in the world to turn things around. But unfortunately, football clubs are, more, you know, the stuff that happens on a football pitch has reverberating effects throughout the entire organization of a team. Essentially, football teams are essentially like franchises in the United States, right? There has a lot more, it ties into the local community, the local economy, um, you know, brand sponsorships abroad. There's so much at stake, so they cannot, simply cannot afford especially with all these 
sponsorship deals, uh, you know, still in the air, right? Um, Renewal is still kind of pending upon some certain uh, benchmarks being reached. Um, there's this assumption within outside of United, especially with some people that are in the know that the people behind the scenes at United are obsessed with social media um, engagement and outreach, right? They use this, um, you know, our total number of followers to justify some bullshit decisions about what they do. They announce crappy sponsorships. Like they're so deluded. They're so detached from what the actual fans are on. But if that's the case and they care a lot about social media engagement and what people are saying online, the last thing they want is for every time United lose, for people on the timeline to be calling for the Glazers out, saying Edward was a Muppet, calling Solskjaer a PE teacher. They don't want that. It, re it looks bad. It, it, re um, it reflects badly on the club. So just for that alone, I could see them saying, you know what, let's get, let's get someone in that's kind of like, as internationally liked in terms of a Pochettino. He's well liked uh, more so than a Solskjaer, I guess, especially Solskjaer, I guess not liked mostly because of the protection he gets from these ex-pro teammates, you know, who kind of all want to, um, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, maybe that's the case. Who continues here? United have lost um, three of their six Premier League games already this term and have not lost uh, four of their first seven in a league campaign since 1989. We always got these weird records that our managers break over the years, isn't it? Some consistency there. The trip to Everton um, is United's last game for two weeks due to the November's internationals, a period that has become synonymous with top flight sackings. Solskjaer was asked whether he feared for his job after the 2-1. Uh, oops, pause that reversed in Istanbul and replied I declined to comment on such things of course it's early on and opinions are out there all the time you've got to stay strong I'm employed by the club to do a job and I do what's best for my ability and with my staff this doesn't you always sound like that's the thing you always see people like here like people like Stephen House and telling you don't listen to what the manager says you're just talking it doesn't matter whatever happens on the pitch but he's so uninspiring when he does speak in it he sounds like such a bore like Especially for somebody that was such a talented football player, such a cult hero at United, and like a legit legend. It's such a shame for him to go out and it's like whimpering, right? You would have expected some level of fight just in terms of, like, even if he would have just committed to just keep playing Daniel James, right? I would have respected that a lot more than just this chopping and changing. The diamond works, so I use it in two games because it worked in the other game. Then it doesn't work. Then I revert back to the system. Dropping him, dropping it. Like, it's just... Like, uh, it's such a shame, really, considering how it started to where it's gone now, man. It really is. He says, yeah, I hope I hope to go back. Oh, what did he say? Uh, Pochettino declared his intention to return to Manjuru during, uh, Manjuru or sorry, during his appearance on Monday Night Football. He said, I'm always ready to go again and to be involved in the game. It's not uh, stress when you are working. It's not stress going into a training ground to prepare the match and to compete. I hope to be back soon so we can start again to work. I'm looking forward to being back in the game. I love this game, but it's difficult. We are inside working on doing things. That's the reality. He definitely wants to be back in. He said that about 17 times so let's see man um i'm personally i think it's probably time for soul shock to go i just think he's at the end of the road here he doesn't seem to have any answers coaching wise in order to kind of turn things around um he obviously didn't get the players he wanted in the summer that's obviously um are gonna be a some an extenuating circumstance but considering our club and considering how we are put together and managed uh, and run it shouldn't be a surprise and if you can't work under these constraints unfortunately you just get someone else that can if they can't get someone else in it just isn't an issue there's nothing we can do about the ownership as fans the only things that we can legitimately impact is the manager the manager anything that he can legitimately impact is that the thing that i'm sort of looking forward to is if pochettino does get hired that maybe because he's all of his clubs he's worked at prior he's always had a footballing director somebody he can kind of liaise with a kind of middle person um to obviously the above um the people above in the boardroom you basically sign the checks somebody to advocate for him somebody to kind of sound off ideas with right be as a act as a soundboard so i'm assuming if pochettino does come in one of his and he's a thorough guy he seems like a guy that kind of has his career path sort of like planned out right in a systematic type of way either especially with this time out he's basically been able to look at everything analyze it all 
I would hope that if he does get hired by United, one of his requirements would be, hey, we have to get a DOF. Director of football has to be hired. I have to have somebody I can work with, somebody that can kind of, you know, that can have my back when we're going through a bad run of games, that can, you know, be able to kind of, you know, share some ideas in terms of scouting types, whatever it may be, whatever they do. I don't know what football directors do, but he definitely would do that more so than maybe a social who I feel like wouldn't necessarily want a football director, I think. I don't know. I just get that feeling he'd want to kind of do on his own, kind of follow Cyrus Ferguson's footsteps. Um, you know, those where I talk about Mike Feeling doing it, Michael Carrick doing it, maybe getting Fletcher involved, just like, ugh, yeah, 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 man. But yeah, hopefully that this happens going forward, but the sooner the better, really. So I can then go and move on and, you know, continue his career wherever it may be, because I'm, I'm still dubious he'll get another job in the Premier League, personally. I think he's done such a sh terrible job in terms of, especially considering that he's been a football manager for, what, 10 years or so? He's been a coach. He's obviously won the league at Molde, but, you know, no one gives a shit about that, really. So if, if ever there was a Farmers League, that would be it. Of course, it's an achievement that he'd done it regardless, but still, let's not you know let's not get over excited here but to be in management for 10 years and to have people like Lampard and Arteta look you know you know well a lot more established and settled in their philosophy and what they want from players and their tactical sort of malleability and just their I don't know whatever it is they just look a lot more assured than um, Solskjaer does. That's a real kind of crying shame about this. So maybe this will be a chance for him to sort of rebound, start his career again, restart his career, sorry, at a smaller club, be able to kind of implement his ideas with a group of players who aren't necessarily such losers as our players are. And, you know, hopefully Pochino can come in and lead us to a new dawn. Who knows? Who knows?